right, watch fans. This is a new one. I think this is my April watch gang, so we'll see. Should be pretty cool. I have absolutely no idea what to expect, <clears throat> which is like all watch game purchases. Uh, unless you're doing a wheel, I suppose. I'm kind of excited. No idea what I'm getting. Ooh. Never heard of this brand. <clears throat> kind of cool. All right. Let's see what this is. Chidola. All right. Looks like uh, that's the Golf. Um, was it a Porsche? I can't remember. From back in the day. 24 Hours in Le Mans. That is really nice. What is this? Damn. This is so cool. Look at this. This is a... Uh, Cadola 1946. Oh, man, what? This is awesome. Alright, I'm going to see what I can find out about this brand. And I will put a video if I can or something. Otherwise, we'll get right back into the watch. Alright, guys. So I couldn't find a video, um, but I did learn a few things about the watch and did a little bit of research. Uh, so it's actually kind of a cool watch, watch brand. Um, as you can see, it's their name is, let's see where to say it. Uh, pretty much says it everywhere, but now I can't find it. Okay. Cadola 1945. That's actually their website as well. So uh, if it wasn't obvious, the brand is from 1945. Now, it is an old Swiss brand. Really, it is not like a super um, super famous brand, Swiss brand, but it was uh, one of many. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, um, it's kind of hard it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but at that time, um, I would say the 40s and 50s, the best watch brands were the American ones. Um, their watch, their, their watch movements were spectacular. They were really, really higher, much higher quality than what you would get in, um, uh, uh, Swiss, um, Swiss made, Swiss made watches. So at the time, uh, they were sort of the Switzerland, Switzerland was sort of the China of watch manufacturers cause they were pumping out uh, a lot of movements and stuff and and that's not to say that they weren't excellent movements and that that's not to say that some Chinese movements aren't also really good but this is what they were doing and um, so they were flooding the market with a lot of fairly inexpensive Swiss 17 jewel movements and uh, they had a bunch of different names on them for those who don't know I think at some point in the 40s or 50s they even had to do an import tax and uh, to try and curb the uh, the number of watches coming in uh, during during that period of time to sort of help the American manufacturers from from Switzerland. So they got uh, uh, I don't know stamps. There had to be a code that was put on on the watch. A um, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a three letter code that be that would be stamped on the bridge. Um, and so there was a lot of different manufacturers that uh, all led back to at least, I don't know, maybe six or seven main primary manufacturers. Everybody was doing one. And uh, uh, Cadola was one of those, although it was, uh, it was a fairly good watch, watch manufacturer. Um, but they were using simple 17 jewel um, Ashlitz or, uh, you know, Baumgartner type movements. You know, nice, nice movements either way. Still, still thought it was really cool. Now, uh, in this case, um, what happened here is there's a company called um, Solar Time Limited. Now, Solar Time Limited was created in the 1970s, and they were part of a movement when uh, everyone else started making watch movements. During uh, the early parts of the quartz crisis, for example, the quartz crisis, for those who don't know, quick history, that's when uh, China, Japan... Um, uh, primarily Japan and a bunch of other people started making uh, watch movements, but they were digital uh, using quartz uh, technology. And then Switzerland started to get really hurt. So a lot of these uh, Swiss brands, they started producing watches in Hong Kong. 
and so uh, Solar Time Incorporated was was an example of that, created by a bunch of uh, UK and Swiss uh, watch conglomerates, and they created it back in Hong Kong. And for those who don't know, Hong Kong has had a very big history in watchmaking for a very long time. Um, and so uh, Cadola is actually one of many brands. Uh, they also make, um, let me see if I've got it, uh, the Dussault line of watches. And like I've got here my Dussault, which is, I love this watch, a very, very nice watch. So they, they make several different watches, uh, watch brands, and they have basically all purchased, a, like almost the entire list of their watch brands are old uh, 60s, 70s watch brands that they have uh, reinvented. Now, obviously these aren't being made in Switzerland anymore. That's okay. I think it's super cool when a company brings back an old watch brand and especially if they do it faithfully, that means a lot to me. I think it's really cool. I don't really care if it's made in Hong Kong or it's made in uh, UK or it's made in Switzerland. Uh, as long as it's a nice watch and they put in some real effort uh, then that's all I care about. So this is the Cadola hairpin. Uh, and just so you know, most of their watch brands, uh, most of their watches either have some sort of dive reference or race car reference. So I think it's particularly cool. Uh, this, this leather strap sort of um, is very similar to what you would have seen sort of on a steering wheel or a racing glove or something. And that's, that's kind of the look they're going for. And this was very 1960s styling. I'll try and see if I can find some similar watches, but essentially this is kind of the style that you would have seen uh, back during that time. I think I've got, uh, you know, this this is also an, an homage to, uh, I think a tag hooer from, from the time, but uh, not, not really properly representative of this. But this was the type of watch that you used to see all the time. The really nice sort of, race car inspired watches during the 60s very very cool now it looks like a chronograph it actually isn't a chronograph you'll see the bottom dial at uh, six o'clock is actually a um 24 hour indicator but it's a second time so you can adjust it you can set it whatever it is and it will of course go as this as this continues uh, as the main three hand watch continues this will go along with it so it's really nice, you know, if you just want to be in a second time zone, uh, you can set it and it uses it. It does it sort of in the same way that a uh, GMT watch would. Uh, at the nine o'clock location, it has day of the week. And let me just move that out of the way so you can see it, which I thought was kind of cool. Day of the week, I thought that was kind of neat. <clears throat> and it actually has the month also. Now it's not a perpetual calendar because of course, you know, this is going to go, um, rotate around to 31 uh, every time, and then you're gonna have to reset it. So it's not a big deal. It's not like something you can set it, and then years later, it'll still be perfectly fine. But still very cool. I think it's really neat. Um, you know, I think this changes the month. Yep, it's almost up to April. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it so you can see that does that. This one does the GMT. To set that, you literally have to go around seven times if you miss it once, right? Or I guess 14. Um, and I've got a uh, atomic clock in my room, so I use this. Looks kind of neat. But very cool watch. I mean, I love the styling. Styling is really is really what, what makes it worth it. Um, comparing to, it's, it's more of a traditional kind. I mean, this is a gigantic watch, so whatever. Probably bad example, but... Uh, Still, very nice. Uh, you know what? Like, gosh, I don't know why I didn't just pull this stuff off first. Probably think this looks ridiculous. <laughs> Much nicer. So uh, the watch actually has a Swiss movement in it, but it is not uh, Swiss made. Uh, it, well, Swiss made parts. So, and I'll, I'll put a picture of it. It's an, it's an ISA, um, I don't know. I can't remember what it is. I'm not going to... I'll put it at the bottom there. It's a very nice movement. Um, Swiss parts made in... Uh, it'll say Far East, so that typically means somewhere like Malaysia or uh, uh, Singapore or Vietnam or China or Hong Kong. Uh, it really just depends. Uh, it just means that uh, the parts were all made and stamped in, in uh, Switzerland uh, out of the ISA factory. 
but it wasn't actually assembled until it uh, got to its final destination, which in this case probably was Hong Kong. Now, uh, still excellent movement, um, has good time reserve, uh, and it has a lot of these additional features, which is why they went with that, because some of these other ones, some of the other uh, uh, Cadola watches, they just use uh, Japanese movements. So they obviously need this, and I don't think that they wanted to go with some of the, the uh, Chinese movements, so uh, I, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I love the color. Uh, the contrast is fantastic. This is their burgundy slash black model. Uh, a couple things about the watch. It is stainless steel. Um, I don't think it's 316 stainless steel, but it's still quite good. Uh, acid etched back, which is really nice. Um, and then that's, uh, I guess it's all acid etched. The, uh, the, cr the crystal is uh, ever so slightly domed, which as you can kind of see. Which is actually super cool. I really like that. And uh, it is not sapphire, but it is sapphire coated. So what that means is uh, they basically took... Um, a lot of people don't understand this. Yes, sapphire is a naturally occurring stone, but it can also be synthetic. And so that's, that's what it is. Whenever you see a sapphire crystal, like on a Rolex, it's not like they just... I don't know, mined a piece of uh, sapphire and just like cut it perfect. It's They melt it and they create... Uh, basically a sapphire disc uh, and in this case they just melt the sapphire and, and, and coat the uh, mineral crystal so that makes it scratch resistant it doesn't make it impact resistant which is okay uh, full sapphires impact and scratch resistant but this is hardened mineral crystal and quite honestly if you're going to uh, hit it really hard you're gonna have other problems anyways uh, but uh, I think it's really nice I love sort of the, the color shift and it's beveled but not ridiculously so, so you still get good, uh, you know, good contrast there. Uh, let's see what else can we talk about. It is um, 100 meters uh, water resist. Uh, so now that's actually very nice because even though I don't think you would want to necessarily wear this um, in the water, you know, if you're at a party or hanging out or something and somebody pushes you in the pool, this is perfect. You could go snorkeling with it. I don't know why you would with a leather strap. <clears throat> I think I might honestly, if I was going to wear this more regularly, I'd probably put uh, like a, I don't know, let me see. Like, you know, one of these, one of these nylon straps on here. I mean, imagine this with black, <clears throat> a black nylon strap. That'd be pretty cool. I think that'd look pretty nice. Um, yeah, 100 meters. So, so quite good. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about? You know, I'm going to go ahead and do some measurements, get some of these things out of the way. Um nice box by the way i think it's pretty cool i mean I mean, you don't buy a watch for its box but it's nice to know that they put in a little bit of effort all right i'm gonna say it's probably about a 43 millimeter uh yep so 43 uh let's see 20 millimeter lug and man i've been so wrong with this i'm gonna try and guess i'm gonna say 13. 13 and a half. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's highest point, 13 and a half. All right, let's do uh, a loom shot. Hopefully it's going to be cool. All right, pretty good. It's not super luminova by any means, but uh, still pretty decent. I mean, it's a new watch. You can see the little secondhand uh, arrow or delta going down, so... I like it, pretty cool. All right, what else can I talk about this watch? All right, so uh, you see it's got, of course, the date, like we already talked about. Um, it's nice style, again, com the com the com although the company was founded in 1945, um, so a time, uh, just created, uh, was founded in 1977 and created this, recreated this model, re-registered the uh, trademark uh, as early as, so I think I looked it up, 2018 was when they first started initiating the, uh, trying to get the, uh, the rights to it, but uh, this watch first showed up on, I guess, the watch stage back in 2020. So literally this watch brand is basically brand new um an homage to the original cadola i mean it's still the same uh you know they 
basically bought the rights, re-registered the, the trademark. So they have every right to use it. And I think it's pretty cool. And I'm a big fan of bringing back old old namesakes. So huge fan. Um, uh, gosh, one more thing. It is not a screw down crown, but a nice signed crown there. Uh, does have a hacking feature as you can see. But uh, yep, not much more to talk about, but I like this watch. I think I'm gonna wear it and then I'll probably sell it as a used watch. Um, you know, I have too many watches uh, and I, although I do really like this, I'm personally not, I guess, a fan of, of all that stuff going on. Uh, I would much rather have a chronograph. And uh, the MSRP for this watch is $310. And I think retail, from what I was seeing, is about $100. So I got a good deal. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess I, I paid for what this watch is worth, which is what I always expect. I normally do really, really well uh, with Watch Gang. Not that I buy them with the intent to sell them, but uh, I just like to learn about these watches. And I very much enjoyed this watch. And again, I'm going to wear it for a little while. Kind of see how it um, how how it uh, works with me. But I will probably sell it just because I've got over 100 watches now. And uh, <laughs> I need to start moving on on some of them. But uh, uh, Cadola has some really nice uh, uh, watch um, models. I mean, there's a couple that are really, really nice. And most of them are all inspired in some way by racing. So... There's a really nice chronograph that they have that uses the Mecha Quartz VX94, I think is what it is. So I think I may sell this and use that money to buy one of those. So, all right, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like. Uh, have any questions, you can discuss them at the bottom. And uh, appreciate any comments. And if you want to see more of these, please subscribe. Thank you very much.